you looking to dramatically improve your in-clinic outcomes from your periorbital injectable treatments? Well, you are in luck. We have been granted VIP access all areas through this, through the keyhole, sneak peek into Medizen, one of the UK and Ireland's most successful aesthetic clinics. We're so privileged to be here today, having a look behind the scenes, seeing Dr. David Eccleston live in action with a real life patient. Over the next 30 minutes, we're going to be seeing a periorbital um, area assessment, diagnostic, treatment plan building, skincare recommendation, and a live demo on how to teach the patient how to use our iconic set. This is so simple, you can do it in under three minutes during your consultation or periorbital injectable treatment plans. And we're here to show you how you can do this for every single one of your patients to drive your results and your credibility. So exciting to be here to see you live in action tonight, David. For those of you that don't know, Dr. David Eccleston was widely responsible for introducing toxin to the UK and Irish market, and has been involved in just about every clinical study for every toxin that is currently available on the market. He's also an international trainer and KOL and general aesthetics master. Thank you so much for having us. Absolute pleasure. I hope the camera's not picking up the blushing there. <laughs> We're also joined today with a master esthetician, Annabelle, who is going to be demonstrating the uh, application of iconic products and how to educate your patient in the most simple terms, in terms of dose, uh, frequency of use, and also application methodology. A very warm welcome to each and every one of you that are watching this evening. This is our first ever global webinar. So we're delighted that you're joining us from over the pond in Canada and the US. Of course, our home turf audience in the UK and Ireland and our multiple territories across Europe. We've got a really amazing broad gang tuning in tonight and let's make iconic sales across the globe a huge success in the next little while. So let's get stuck into it, David. Um, Annabelle, we'll come to you shortly. Thank you very much. So. Why can you simply not allow a patient to reach their full aesthetic potential by only doing injectables and not including medical grade skincare? Okay. I think the thing to understand is that those of us who have been in the industry for as long as I have, over 25 years, uh, in the olden days, patients would come and say, I'm bothered by this wrinkle here or my lips are a bit thin and we put some filler in the lip or some toxin in the frown and send the patient away. But ultimately, all we're dealing with is a small part of the problem. Nowadays, we, we use our medical skills, our analytical skills to actually look at the patient more holistically. So if you just treat one problem, the patient is then going to just start focusing on other problems. So when I'm considering, for example, the periocular area now or the periorbital area, I'm looking not only at the individual wrinkles, but I'm looking at the, the skin quality, the skin thickness, uh, whether there's uh, broken veins underneath the eye giving a bluish discoloration, whether there's pigmentation problems. And when you actually realise that that combined with the enlarging of the eye socket or orbit, particularly in a postmenopausal woman, and the loss of tissue, then it's not surprising that merely putting some toxin or some filler in the area isn't really going to cut the mustard. So my practice now has become much more all-encompassing, and I give the patient what they need rather than what they think they want. I think it's important to understand the difference there. Absolutely. We don't want the patient to be the expert. They're not the medically trained professional. Correct. So um, by the sounds of things, it is an incredibly difficult area to treat, even with the multimodalities that you've just explained. So let's start with the assessment of the eye area. How would you go about diagnosing the um, sort of impacts of the aging eye? What sort of tests would you do? And how would you educate your patient about what you're recognising through this assessment? OK, well, Shelley's a great example of a patient who I've been seeing for some years now. Uh, she looks after her skin, uh, she has regular toxin treatments every three or four months or so, um, but there's an area of her face which still continues to bother her. She doesn't really have deep crow's feet anymore due to the toxin treatment, her frown line's pretty much settled, but she's still got the, the crinkling to the lateral part of the eye. And if I can get you to look up to the ceiling for me, please, Shelley, and then give us a smile. You can see the area underneath the eye as well is also sort of bunching up. If I ask you to close your eyes now, I'm going to put some gentle pressure on the eyeball itself. And if you look carefully, you can actually see bulging underneath the eye itself, 
which represents the fat pad which sits underneath the eyeball uh, and that starts to prolapse forwards as the muscle that surrounds the eye becomes weaker and the skin becomes thinner and less able to hold back uh, the contents of the eye socket. So if you put too much toxin in there, for example, you're relaxing the only thing holding the tissues together, which is the muscle. If you put filler in an area which is weak, then you actually make the bulge more pronounced. So the trick really nowadays is to improve the quality of the skin and the tissues around the eye before you put your needle in place. And that way you're going to get consistent results, better results and happier patients. So for me, when a patient comes in to see me, uh, this is very much a, sort of a five, five minute snapshot, but a patient will have a half hour consultation at least. We'll talk about their needs and their wants. We'll talk about their medical history and we'll try and understand what it is they're actually expecting uh, from undergoing a course of treatment. And then they need to go away for an obviously uh, cooling off time, which is, is considered sort of best medical practice. But during that time, I encourage them to engage with medical grade skincare and start applying the product at least a couple of weeks before their injectable treatment. And what that means is that when they do come and see me, they've prepared the canvas and the better quality canvas I have to work with, the better painting that I can make with it. And as a result, it flatters my efforts. Patient thinks I'm great and patient will come back and they'll tell their friends, which has got to be great for the business as well. Absolutely. Boosting your credibility. You've got patients that are happy and your business is thriving as well. So do you talk to your patients about the different layers in which these treatments all work? And do you go into that much detail or do you really keep it very simple? I think every patient is an individual. What mm -hmm. I don't like is a sort of an off the shelf consultation style where I go tick, 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 ask the same questions, give the same answers, because some patients uh, may have a medical background or they may have a university education. They may be a school teacher. Others may have uh, less knowledge about sort of medical matters and therefore you start blinding them with science. Mm -hmm. They actually get confused and they actually end up not listening to anything you're saying. Mm -hmm. So I'm keen to educate patients because it engages with them rather than them sitting there thinking doctor knows best. Mm. Uh, so I often use a, a series of aids, for example. Um, this is one that I'm quite keen on identifying the different muscles when, I, when I'm teaching, but I'll sometimes show this to patients as well. And you can see from looking at this image here, the complexity of the muscles, particularly around the eye, explains why wrinkles start to appear around the eye pretty much before anything else. Um, in terms of the layers of the skin, I use these anatomical models, which sort of split apart, which show the various layers of the skin. And I explain that the topical treatments work on the top layers of the skin. Mm -hmm. Some of them will indeed penetrate to the deeper layers. The fillers are being used at this kind of level and the toxin are being used deep in, inside in terms of relaxing the muscles. So if you only treat one layer, then ultimately you're only doing half a job. So it's really, really important to understand that different treatments are appropriate for problems occurring at different layers of the skin and the subcutaneous tissues. Mm. And how simple is that? Toxin will work on the muscle, it's not going to work on the skin. Skin care will work on the skin, it's not going to work on the muscle. Exactly. So you, you, you really do need both of them and it, and it really is that simple. So let's then turn our focus to talk about the iconic kit in particular, because that's why we're here today. Mm -hmm. So um, you've got some really lovely analogies, haven't you, about why you need to prepare the canvas and you often talk about sowing the seed. Yes. Um, and if you're a farmer, for example, you don't just throw the seed on the ground and hope for the best. You, know, you go and you plough your field and if you're non-organic, you'll apply some sort of systemic weed killer. Mm -hmm. If you're organic, you might plough manure into the field. You'll plant the seed and then you'll water it. And as a result, you get a nice predictable crop with high yields. But if you just throw it on the ground, then ultimately you'll get very unpredictable yields and a very poor crop. So if we can prepare the soil properly, that's the analogy I use to patients. They understand that because it's not frightening and it's not medical. They understand that by doing that in advance, the end result is going to be more predictable, more dramatic, more pronounced and longer lasting. So it's very much about getting the patient to understand, look, this is your homework before your exam. Mm -hmm. you know, when, I, when I put my needle in you, that's kind of the cherry on the cake. Yeah. But ultimately, you've got to make the mix first before we bake it, put the cherry on it. And, and this can work in two directions, can't it? Because if you've got some patients that want a, a very dramatic result, you can use um, the ingredients on, on Iconic, which we'll talk about shortly, to get the skin ready so you can have a bit more fun as a practitioner. You can go oh, a little absolutely. bit <laughs> deeper, more The thing is, this is such a crowded market now. There's lots of people out there injecting the 
were in short trousers and, and, and gym kit when I was uh, first injecting, you know, they're about this high and now they're all entering the market. And I think the important thing is those of us who really understand uh, the anatomy and physiology of the skin, um, we can deliver something extra. We need to be at the top of our game and we need to be educating our patients. Uh, and, and I think for me, education is critical. It's one of the passions I have. I travel all over the world talking about all sorts of things. Uh, but for me, it's not just about educating fellow professionals. It's about educating my patients to get them to engage with me. Because ultimately, I can give them a treatment, but they also have a responsibility moving forward to look after their skin. So use of retinoids, use of sunscreens, uh, use of uh, vitamin serums. Uh, and all of these will not only enhance the results I'm able to give, but also the patient will engage more and see it as part of a total skincare programme rather than just coming in for a treatment every three or four months. Absolutely. So you get to have more fun for those patients that need more dramatic results yes. and sort of, you know, drive the credibility of your clinic in that way. But also it's quite good for patients that might want minimally invasive treatments. Yes. You can actually hold back on some of those invasive treatments if, the, as you say, the canvas has been so dramatically improved. Yes, I think so one of the things I've noticed over the last few years is particularly when it, when it comes to toxins, patients don't want that frozen look. Mm -hmm, mm. uh, in the olden days, they'd come in and say, look, doctor, I can still move. And I go, I'm really sorry, let's put some more in there. But now it's about, will my friends be able to tell? Yeah. They just want to look their best, uh, but they don't want to look done. And I think lips is a maybe a different area to talk about. There's all sorts of reality TV shows on at the moment where the girls have got these great big lips. And that unfortunately tends to drive a a dysmorphophobic fashion for hyperinflated lips, but we're talking about the periocular area, and certainly over frozen faces are so sort of 20 years ago now that if you can do something that requires you to use a minimal, res uh, minimal amount of, say, toxin or filler uh, by making the area better in the first place, then the patient's going to be a lot happier, but also their friends and family are going to be saying, Wow, you look well, mm. not who did your Botox yeah, or who did your it, filler yeah. or who did whatever. Yeah. Um, so ultimately, it's about giving the patient the opportunity to look the best they can be, but still look like themselves. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So let's then talk about the two products that feature in Iconic. The first is Illumini, and this is a super hydrating, super charged eye cream that features clinically proven peptide Matrixyl Sin 6 to help reduce the appearance of lines and wrinkles, as well as Holoxyl, which will help to um, disperse blood that's been hanging around for a little bit too long, is a little bit sluggish to reduce the appearance of dark circles. And and it's got eyeless, which will help to shift um, sort of stagnant lymph that's hanging around to reduce the appearance of puffiness as well. Now, there are three things um, just by one product, and you can do that all in one simple recommendation. How do you talk to your patients about Illumina? I think a lot of patients, when they come and see us, they come and see us because everything else has failed. Mm -hmm. They've been through six or seven different skincare ranges. Uh, they've been to the local department store, they've seen one of the, uh, the well-dressed, well-made-up girls in their white coats offering a full skincare analysis, and they've tried the products and they didn't really cut the mustard, didn't really do the job. So it's important, first of all, to get across to the patient that this is different. Okay, we've used uh, prescription skincare ranges in the past, we've used uh, medical-grade skincare, um, but Treating the periocular area has always been a challenge because a lot of the ingredients that are proven to drastically improve the skin quality and texture can't be used around the eye. Things like uh, the older types of retinoids and so on would actually cause a lot of irritation, a lot of redness, a lot of flaking. And as a result, the, the patients just wouldn't tolerate it. So what excited me about this, and certainly since we started using it in the clinic, was how easy it is to use. Um, the patients love it. The practitioners love it because the patients come back. Um, and it's it's a game changer for me. Um, and not only has it improved my patient outcomes, uh, but also it's improved my patient demand. So yeah, more patients are coming to see us. Yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. So we've got dark circles, puffiness, and the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles mm -hmm. being targeted by the Illumini. But something I know that you're incredibly passionate mm -hmm. about, not least because of its multiple decades of scientific mm -hmm. literature is retinol. And you just mentioned that's something that historically we've yes. not been able to use around the eye. We've known that retinoids uh, can drastically improve the appearance of the skin since the early 70s when it was being used to treat um, acne and acne scarring. 
Uh, but as a side effect of that, patients noticed that their pigmentation was improving, their skin texture was improving, their pore size was shutting down, and their deep lines and wrinkles were improving. So we know beyond any doubt that vitamin A derivatives are very effective in treating fine lines and wrinkles, but they're also in intensely irritating, and the original products you just couldn't put anywhere near the eye, uh, and therefore you get patients with nice, tight, shiny new skin, and they'd still look old around the eyes. Mm. So this product contains what's called encapsulated retinol. What that means is the product is delivered to the skin in a very uh, slow, predictable manner, which minimizes irritation and maximizes the penetration. So what that means is you can now use it in those areas where previously we couldn't go. Uh, and that for me, again, is a game changer uh, because we know that of all the products we use, it's still the retinoids, which are the best treatment for lines and wrinkles. It stimulates type one and type three collagen, increase the production of hyaluronic acid uh, and it has an effect on the uh, the basal layers uh, and also greatly improves the uh, the appearance of multiple skin proteins and extracellular matrix which is what plumps up the skin makes it more opaque um, reduces the appearance of the pigmentation and uh, the bluish discolorations caused by the vascular pooling mm -hmm. so very exciting product yeah, brilliant. And it's the um, exfoliation properties that you mentioned there that can yes. make it a little bit irritating. So how do you navigate that with some of your patients? I think the important thing to understand is it's not a matter of throwing more product to get a better result. Mm. You know, if, if I like to use a cooking analogy. If you feel something needs a bit more salt, you get it just right, then you throw a bit more in for good measure, it suddenly becomes inedible. Mm -hmm. With skincare, if you apply more product unnecessarily, you don't get a better result, you just get an increased likelihood of side effects. So the trick with these products is to use a tiny amount, but use it regularly. So as a result, you minimize the risk of any problems and maximize the outcome. And if the patient doesn't get the irritation and the patient sees a result, and we see results in consistently greater than 50 to 60% of patients when the product's been used for maybe only a couple of months. So mm -hmm. the results are pretty quick to see. Uh, and there's plenty of blinded studies out there and placebo controlled studies, which have actually shown a, a definite difference there. Um, if the patient does get some irritation, uh, then I will tend to use um, the, um, uh, the, the Illumini, yes, sorry, the Illumini, which is the, the other component of the, of the iconic product. And a thin layer of the Illumini before the retinol goes on just slows down the penetration of the product and minimizes the irritation. But normally uh, applying the retinol first before um, the, the other product goes on is, is the way to go to maximize the penetration of the retinol itself. And there's a lot of variabilities there that you've just mentioned, and that's one of the reasons that consultation mm. is so important. We're talking, you know, you've mentioned dose, mm. you've mentioned exposure, mm. time of day that you apply, how frequently mm. throughout the week you apply, and then, of course, layering as well. Yes. So that's five really good reasons to do a consultation for your patients on these products. Um, you can add a lot of value to your patients in that way. So I think mm. it segues us really nicely into bringing Annabelle back from uh, stage right, thank you very much. Hi. So Annabelle is now going to show us exactly how she would educate her patients on using the Iconic Kit in less than five minutes. Over to you. Wonderful. So what I like to do with my patients is um, ask them to watch application. So Shelley here has a mirror, which she will keep just down this side and watch how I apply the first stage of the eye iconic. So using your ring finger, which is very important because this enables pressure for product, um, I would apply a grain of rice amount. And as you can see here, we would just apply it around the crow's feet, very gently applying a little bit of pressure. Does that feel? Mm -hmm. Okay. And with our secondary product, the Illumini, this is a wonderful product with light reflecting properties. So this is the one that can be applied a little bit more generously and in areas that we can bring a little bit higher up to the eye. So you can see here, again, same method, a little bit of pressure, and we can bring this nicely up to the brow. So. Is that as you would have applied it, Shelley, yourself? Absolutely not. No, <laughs> no. I would have taken this finger, I would have rubbed in mm. and, and been a bit more aggressive. So mm. this is, you know, it's nice. It's a lovely light product. Mm. The idea as well is to bring this into the corner just so you get full absorbed. Okay. 
Wonderful. And how does that feel? It's nice. It looks like it brightens the skin as well. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So if I give you a mount of product now, are you happy to apply that yourself? Yes. Using so same method. Yeah. There we go. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. And I also would have thought you'd need a lot more. So yeah. That's perfect, Mount. So, so let's yeah. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Perfect. So that's it. That area there, no higher than that. No, bringing that down. Perfect. How does that feel doing that for the first time? Does that feel a bit foreign or is it quite It's not something do? I would do. So yes, it does. But I have to say, it's a lovely product. It feels really smooth. Wonderful. How would you describe the absorbability? Lovely. It just soaks in lovely. Mm. And it really looks like it brightens me straight away. So yeah, wonderful. Okay, same finger for the other product. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So we're just applying the same amount there. A little bit more generous so that okay. can go around the top. That's perfect. Uh, okay, so a little bit further up. Yeah, and bring that right round now. Okay. Wonderful. Still patting, not rubbing. Yeah, patting and pressing. It just enables the pressure to be a little bit more um, okay. precise. And are many of your patients surprised about this application? Absolutely, too? yeah. So finding with this as well how simple it is, also um, just the whole method behind the product being absorbed into that particular area. So um, yeah, this is a product itself that is proving very, very popular within clinic and um, for at home at use alongside you know, having this um, visits with the doctors as so well. So once a day? Be yeah, so with retinol, you'd be doing twice a week. Um, and that's building that retinal tolerance. And then your Illuminare eye, you can use um, every day. Yeah, so clean. Yeah. Feels lovely. Fabulous. Fabulous. Thank you and so much. I can much. do that, okay? Yeah. So look at that. Just a few minutes um, on top of your injectable treatment for the eye area. You can also do that in a consultation. It's such a simple bolt on to your existing medical grade skincare routine. It would include your vitamin C, your retinols, and things. How are your eyes feeling now? Lovely. Yeah. And as a, I have a fresh feeling. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, good. And as a um, sort of patient that's lying on the bed there, would you think that that demonstration and holding the mirror would be useful? It would help you once you've got home. Yes. You, would you see value in that? I, I would have rubbed it in. I wouldn't have patted. I would have definitely have rubbed it in. And I probably would have put a bit more of the product on it. You, you clearly don't need a lot of the product because it goes a long way. Amazing. So yeah, brilliant. Oh, great. So we've covered quite a lot of ground. We've seen a um, assessment of the periocular area and diagnostic of the anatomy of the aging eye. We've also heard what treatments you would do for this particular patient. And um, that includes a, a little bit of quite a few modalities actually, which was really nice to hear. And then of course, how you would complement this with um, Iconic at home for anything from two weeks before the, before the patient's treatment. Is it really that simple? I, as I've got older and wiser, I've gone for simplicity because if you keep trying to change the rules and reinvent the wheel, then you're actually going to find that it becomes more difficult. And I, I like the quick fix uh, and I like the easy fix and my patients like that too. I'm not gonna blind them with science. I just want a product that works and that makes my job easier and makes my results appear better because then you know we all look like heroes. So it's really nice that the patient's doing some of the work as well and they're engaging with it. You're not just serving up the treatment on a plate, uh, you're engaging with the patient and they become part of the team uh, responsible for, for, for the results. That yeah, we're that's really good, isn't it? You hold up your end of the bargain at home and we'll yeah. hold up our end Absolutely. of the bargain. This is the homework and they come in for their exam. Yeah, brilliant. So just to sort of round up and finish up then, what would you say to practitioners that might be watching that perhaps aren't including medical grade skincare in general or iconic in particular in their in their consultations for injectables. Well, okay. So first of all, if you're not embracing medical grade skincare, you are missing a trick. Not only in terms of the final outlook for your patients, but also for the success of your clinic, both with the results you can deliver and ultimately uh, how successful your business is on, on a financial basis. Um, Doing injectable treatments without skincare is like eating spaghetti without sauce, you know. Yes, it's nutrition, but no one really wants to eat it a second time. So <laughs> by, by putting everything together, the, the result is greater than the sum of the individual parts. Uh, so if you're not embracing skincare in your clinic, do so. You, you, you're crazy not to because your patients will love you for it. 
you'll get more patients coming through as a result of personal recommendation. Uh, and um, you are judged by your results and by what your patients say about you. Yeah, fantastic. So what can you do now to implement some of these things within your clinic? Well, first of all, you can do the iconic webinar on the uh, Illumier MD Academy for Aesthetic Professionals. This focuses on the anatomy of the aging eye and takes a very deep dive into the medical grade ingredients that feature in Iconic and talks about the molecular biology about how they help to address the anatomy of the aging eye. Not necessarily that you would want to share all of that with your patient, as David, you've said multiple times this evening, but it's really good for your own knowledge so that you can talk with experience and confidence when you're recommending these products. You can also watch this back. It is going to be readily available for you on the Illumiate MD Academy if you want to see the application technique and the demonstration again. And then practice with some of your patients that perhaps you're very familiar with that you wouldn't mind to say, could I practice my consultation for the eye area with you? Get the mirror out, get them doing it on themselves and ask for some feedback. You might just be able to improve your consultation practice by getting their feedback. You can also do the Illumier MD consultation training if you feel a little bit nervous still about sounding salesy or pushing your patients away because you're trying to flog them things that they think they don't need. The Illumier MD aesthetic consultation training is really great for putting education first and empowering you to empower your patients more importantly. There's also one-to-one -one coaching available from your account managers to make sure that you can educate and empower your patients in a comfortable way for both you and them. Thank you so much for joining us. David, thank you so much for giving us a sneak peek behind the scenes through the keyhole style uh, access to this live consultation. Thank you for being our model, Shelley. Thank you to you, Annabelle, for a brilliant demonstration. If you do have any other questions or you'd like any support making this a success in your clinic, don't hesitate to reach out to your account manager or clinical educator. Literally every single one of us across the globe at Illumier MD are on hand and ready to help you make this a huge success, both clinically and commercially. Have a lovely evening, great rest of the week and a fabulous weekend. Bye everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.